In this video, I'm gonna be unboxing and testing out Frozen's brand new machine, the Sonic Mega 8KS. And it is a beast of a machine that lets you print off things like this. Oh, that's a big old bug. So let's get on with it. So if you're not too sure what the Frozen Sonic Mega 8K is, it's basically a big old machine. It's got a 15 inch build plate and it is absolutely massive. It's got an 8K screen with a big old vat on top of it that will absolutely store a ton of resin. It's got this really interesting lid as well, so it doesn't lift off, it just kind of hinges up and over. So that way if you're in a tighter space, you don't have to worry too much about it. And all in all, this thing is just a beast of a machine. Now Frozen, who very kindly sponsored this video, also sent me over a couple of extras to go with this. So I've also got the big old Mega Wash machine, and I've also got the Mega Cure machine. Another interesting extra that you can get with the Mega S is this pump and refill machine. And basically you add an extra bottle of resin into that. And it detects when your resin levels are running out and then automatically refills it. For a machine this size, definitely worthwhile having, but we'll get onto that later because I did kind of run into a bit of an issue when I ran out of resin. So just to give you an idea of how big this thing is, I've got some comparisons here and I'll have it all labeled up on the screen. So I've got the build plate of the Mega S for a comparison and then I've got my Frozen Sonic Mighty. I've also got the Mini on there because I just thought that would be quite fun. And I've also got the Elgu Saturn 2 build plate. And that way you can get an idea if you've already got one of these machines, how much bigger this is. So to get started, first up, I needed to unbox it. And then once everything was unboxed, it was time to get over to the setup process. Okay, so there's a lot of boxes to unbox. So the first one oh, is this. Oh my God. So this is the Mega. I believe so. Yep, that's the Mega. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Huh. There's a lot of stuff in there. Oh, holy moly. That, that's a, that's a massive bat. That is utterly huge. I mean, for scale, I know none of you really know me in real life, but that's like almost a third of a Sean. Got little legs, yep, it's got little legs, so it's not gonna get damaged. Build plate. Oh, tell you what, a zombie apocalypse comes and I've got myself a shield. Here they are, so I will now try and find a way to set these up. We'll do a few size comparisons, obviously get some test prints done on this, and one thing I want to do is print off a full army on this. So I am wanting to get ready for the old world. So I'm going to be doing a Bretonian army and an Orcs and Goblins army. I think this is going to help me on the way there. So I need to find some space. I don't know where these are going to go. I wonder if this will fit in my grow bag. We're about to find out. So let's quickly touch on the big old wash and cure machines. First up, that wash machine. I really like it. The only thing to bear in mind is that you're going to need a lot a lot a lot of cleaning fluid in there this thing holds a whole lot of stuff on there but the good thing is you don't need to fill it up all the way to be able to just drop your plate into it the plate fits into the basket which was quite fun so a lot of the time i've just dunked the plate in there and then set it to washing so i don't have to fill it up to the top and also as well it does come with all the brackets so that way you can use different types of plates on it but things like my mighty plate just drops straight into the basket as you'd imagine since the mega does so you can just use this one wash machine for pretty much all of your printers the thing that i love the most about the wash machine and this is going to sound stupid is the lid because it turns into this tray and it's great because basically i grab the tray I pop it under the build plate when I'm pulling that off. So that way any drippage I've got drips into there. I then clean everything up in it and then I can pop it onto the washing machine. And when I take the plate out, I can put it back into the lid. So it's catching any spillage and it helps to contain everything into that one place. And it's such a silly thing to like, but I love it. It makes things so much easier. So yeah, hats off to them for that design. Moving across onto the cure machine. It's an absolute beast. And at first I didn't realize it also had a shelf like an oven that you put in there. So you can have multiple things curing at the same time. One thing that I really like about this machine is it pretty much has exposure from all different angles. You've got lights on the side and you've also got lights on the top as well. So you're getting really good coverage when it comes to UV exposure. The only thing that I will call out on it is the door doesn't have like a lock. So when you open the door, You've got to make sure you catch it because if you open it and let it go, it's going to swing all the way to the side. If you've got anything nearby that it could knock onto, you've got that risk that's going to swing open and smash. So just, you know, bear that in mind. Okay, so I am running off my first test print at the moment. So I'm doing one of the validation matrixes. And I wanted to do this just to make sure I could really dial in the settings and everything else like that. 
The printer is now in my grow tent and the good news for anybody else who's run off and bought one of these ones like I have, it does fit in there as well. Even with the cap lifted up, it all fits quite nicely. So let's leave the printer to do its thing and I will come back in about 15 minutes, see how the results look and then we'll go from there. So I've done a couple of calibration prints just to see how this turns out. So I started off with the default settings, which are two seconds. I then moved down to 1.7. It still seemed a little bit overexposed. So then I dropped it all the way down to 1.3 just to see what would happen. And that seemed underexposed. And then I eventually settled on 1.5 seconds. Now in there, I currently have just a standard miniature on its support. So if you just can see how well that actually turns out, so fingers crossed it's working. So everything's going really smoothly so far on the setup of this machine. One thing to point out though, is because it's got that all these holes in the build plate, it prints those off on the bottom of an object, which is really weird. Not an issue, I guess, if you're doing something that's supported because you're gonna be throwing that away anyway. But because of the size of the machine, this is one of the reasons I mentioned it, is if you were printing terrain directly onto this, so for example, you had some walls or anything like that, if the bottom of that terrain was flush on the build plate, you're gonna get these little bubbly bits, which are just really odd. I guess you could sand them down and stuff like that. Or you could probably put something down on the print beds. I, I don't know, there would be ways around it, but just what it's worthwhile noting. The other great thing is it has this little like handle bit on there as well. So when you remove the build plate, you can then hook it onto that. And basically this allows all of the excess resin just to run off it. And because it's such a large build plate, there's so much excess resin both on the top and on the bottom. And one great thing about the build plate is on the top of it, it is slightly angular as well. So that helps some of that resin to run off. But having that hook is really, really helpful. So I managed to get my first full plate printed off, but I did have a couple of issues. It looks like my exposure settings were a little bit on the low side and I had some things falling off the support. But apart from that, everything else printed perfectly. I then moved across onto a big build plate of night. And this is where I ran into my first major issue, which was 100% my fault. I ran out of resin and I've never ever run out of resin mid print ever. Now this machine does have an optional extra where you can get an automatic resin refill bit, but I've never run into this issue before. So I had no idea that I would actually need that, but I completely misjudged the amount of resin in there, which is quite easy to do because ultimately you've got such a massive vat in there. I'm used to pouring just like a bottle of resin in, probably need to go with two just to be on the safe side. So after clearing up the mess that I'd created, it was nice to see that the vat cleaner works very, very nicely and I managed to get it all cleaned up nicely and got back onto printing. And then I moved on to something just a little bit bigger. And I printed off these two trolls and they came out very, very nicely. And then I moved on to something a little bit bigger than that, which was this terrain. This terrain was actually smaller than I expected it to be. So I'll probably have to scale it up and try again. But the details on it are fantastic and everything came off really, really nicely. As I was going through this entire process, there was a few things there that I needed to do just to dial in some settings. The exposure settings were definitely a little bit too low throughout the whole thing. So I kept on dialing that back up and eventually got to a place where I was quite happy with it. Now, my big fear that I had with this build plate at the start with those little holes in it and then leaving those kind of like little bumps all over the print, did come through when it came to the terrain prints. So with these terrain prints, I printed them directly onto the build plate. So I encountered that issue. So it is something just to bear in mind. It's not gonna take me too long to clean up and just slice those bits off it. But if you're having to do that every single time, it could become a bit of an issue. Don't know whether or not there's gonna be a flex plate or something like that you could get for this. I'm not entirely sure if it would work with a flex plate just because it's pushing so much resin out of the way. But I guess somebody smarter than me will answer that. So now all of that is done, it's time to move on to something really, really big. And I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Station Forge released this massive, like Xenomorph, Tyranid, Bio Titan thing. And normally that's something like the Sonic Frozen Mighty, which is a big build plate on itself. It would take about 10 or 11 build plates. With this, it's gonna take just over two. And I'm excited to see how this turns out, or if it even turns out at all, because knowing me, I'll run out of resin or do something stupid like that. So let's go over to Future Sean and <laughs> see how this monstrosity's turned out. So impressively, that absolute massive Bio Titan has come off really, really well. Had no failures at all, and I managed to get the whole thing done. And I was wrong, came off in two plates. So that's pretty fantastic. Now there is so many pieces to this and they're absolutely massive. So thankfully, no one's gonna want to see this actually assembled because that would be an absolute pain. But well, actually, the audience would like to see it assembled, please. Oh, okay, oh. Well, you're assembling it then. Off I go then. So now that everything is printed, primed and just set up, I'm really, really impressed with this. I've had no issues with it. The only errors that I've run into are errors of my own making. So when I didn't fill it up enough, that was just an absolute stupid error. So all in all, it's been a really easy machine to work with and the quality is fantastic. Being able to print off things like this is insane. And I was wrong, it did take just over two plates because there's one bit at the back that I forgot to print, which is really, really annoying. 
However, this literally took like between like two and three build plates, which is insane compared to something like 10 or 11 that I'd have had to have done on the Mighty beforehand. And then when it comes to printing off large armies, for example, I can easily fit 40 of those miniatures from Highlands Miniatures onto one build plate and they're done in about three hours, which is insane. And bear in mind as well that I haven't done any tinkering with the speed, so I could probably get that to go a little bit faster. The quality of all the minis looks fantastic as well. It's as good as any of the other machines that I've been using. Everything's been printed at the default 0.05 millimeter layer height as well, so I could probably get even better quality from it, but I'm really, really impressed with this. It's fast, it's efficient, and the build plate, I love it. Granted, it has those issues with the perforated holes on there, and if you're printing directly onto the build plate, yes, that could potentially be an issue, but if you support it and put a brim or anything else on it, it's not gonna be too much of an issue. So for me, it's not gonna get in the way massively, but for some people out there, it is worthwhile knowing about. But the build plate feels a little bit like magic in the fact that if you just so much as touch a print with the scraper, it falls off the build plate. But I have not once yet had a single thing fall off the build plate during printing, which is a massive bonus. But it's weird because like every other printer, they're either quite hard to get off the build plate, but then when you lower those burning layers, sometimes they will fall off the build plate. I've not had anything. And that's including some of the really big bits that printed with this thing or the train prints as well. So I've been really, really impressed with how well it's stuck to the build plate, but then when it comes off to actually cleaning it, they come off the build plate really, really nicely. So there's a lot to love about these machines. It gives you great quality prints, things print off very quickly, and you can get so much onto your build plate. So all in all, there's so many great things there, but there are some things that are a little bit disappointing. And the first one is that for this price point, I wish that it had some kind of heating option. Heating, for me at least, is one of those big major things that getting right means that you get successful prints and better print quality. And when it gets too cold, things start to fail and they pretty much will fail, especially when you've got something this size because you've got so much resin in there, you want to keep it nice and heated. Granted, there are third party options that you can get. You can get like a vat heater or you can do something like I do where it goes into grow temp with its own heater. So it's not too much of an issue. But it would have been nice, especially at this price point, if we had some kind of heating built into the printer, or at least some kind of frozen option for that. The other thing that is a little bit disappointing, especially in comparison to Frozen's other machine, the Sonic Mighty, is that the operating system actually on the thing just, it feels like any other printer. It's easy to use, which is a good thing. You basically plug your USB in and you hit print and you're good to go. But I think I've been spoiled by the way that the Mighty worked and the fact that it had internal storage. So you could take things from a USB, which you know we all know they sometimes fail. So it's nice to have it on the internal storage. And the Mighty just had a really nice interface that just felt a little bit smarter. Like I said, this just feels like any other printer that you've probably used in the past. There's no internal storage, gets the job done. So there's no problems there, but I just wish it was a little bit more advanced like the Mighty. However, the pros far outweigh the cons. But I guess the question is, who is this machine for? Because you're probably sat there thinking, well, actually it costs like 15 to $1,600. Why would I pick one of these up? And granted, it's not the machine for everyone. And obviously you have alternatives like the Frozen Sonic Mighty, which is an awesome machine and comes in at a lower price. Granted, it is a smaller build plate, but it's still large enough to get a lot done. Personally, I think this machine is perfect for anybody who's printing to sell and they get a large amount of orders coming in. Having just the one machine to worry about rather than maybe multiple, and one that does it really, really well is a great thing to have. You'd be able to print things like terrain prints off on their large props. You'd also be able to print off large amounts of units in one go rather than having to do multiple print runs, which in my opinion is fantastic. It means you only have the one type of machine to maintain. So all in all, for those type of people, that is great. Also for anybody, I guess like myself, who's doing a lot of production stuff and you've got to print off a lot of things very quickly, it's great just having the one printer and not having to plan out all the different build plates you're gonna do because you just have this one large build plate that fits everything onto it. And then finally as well, anybody who's printing off anything large, like big props or big bits of terrain, and wants that extra build space and doesn't wanna use an FDM printer for that, then this is fantastic. So yeah, that's my initial thoughts on the Frozen Mega. I think it's an awesome machine. It's got so much good going for it. And although it does have a couple of things on there that are a little bit of a miss, they're certainly not show stopping and they mostly have workarounds anyway. It's a machine that lets me print off too much and I'm now gonna most likely become overwhelmed with armies or very large prints like this thing here. Oh, I don't even know where to start in painting this. And it does it quickly and in great quality. Literally that army took me like two days max to get done and that's with a lot of stopping and filming and messing around with editing. It's incredible what this machine can do, and if you're in the market for that sort of thing, and if you're printing to sell, this could be a game changer for your setup. So let me know in the comments, what would you like me to test out next with the Frozen Mega 8KS? 
It's an awesome machine and thanks so much to Frozen for sending it over. If you want to see me paint up this, or maybe the army of Bretonians as well, then make sure you hit that like button and yeah, we'll see what we can do. So thanks so much for watching. Any questions, throw them down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. See you in the next one. Bye.